By the end of this program, three of these four special agents will have been eliminated by the forces of foreign espionage. By the end of this program, only one will have completed the mission and qualified for the title, The Master Spy. And now meet the man in control, our resident spy master, William Franklin. Good evening, and welcome to The Master Spy, in which four special agents enter the uncertain world of intrigue and deception to test their abilities of coping with the unexpected. On hand is Miss Moneypacker with their credentials, so let's meet the first special agent. Good evening, Em. Good evening, Moneypacker. Special agent number one is Mr. Andrew Cobley, a 25-year-old transport planning engineer from Epsom in Surrey. He has ten O-levels, three A-levels, and three-quarters of a degree. His hobbies include rock climbing, beer drinking, and doing crossword puzzles. Hello, Cobley. Good to have you with us. Beer drinking and rock climbing. They're interesting bedfellows. You ever do them together? Uh, it's not wise, no. Before or after? <laughs> Which first? <laughs> you need the beer to climb the rocks or vice versa? It's the beer after the rocks always. I see. Well, now I'm going to give you a coordination test. In front of you, fairly obviously, are three telephones. This one has a bell, that has a bleep, and that has a buzzer. In a minute, a call is coming through for you, and I want you to take the message. Do you happen to know the capital of Nicaragua? Managua. Would you replace it? What was the message? Yes, telephone code said a procedure for confusing foreign infiltrators. Now I'm going to show you something else, but I can only show you once, so you must pay very close attention. <laughs> There's another call coming for you. I'd like you to take the message. Are you getting a message? Nothing at all. No, I know. You wouldn't unless you actually did that. Because that releases that, and that actually gives you the message. All right? Agent well tried. Cobbley has scored five points for the first correct move, no points for the next move, and no points again because he did fall into the trap. So that's a total of five. Thank you, Cobbley. And you return the base. Special agent number two is Mr. Fred Benjamin, who is married with two children, and he lives at Menston in Yorkshire. He's a lecturer at Leeds Polytechnic and a member of the Special Constabulary. His hobbies include amateur dramatics and uh, writing letters to the local council. Hello, Benjamin. I'm glad you could be with us. You participate in something which would generally be regarded as a fairly useless occupation, and that is writing letters to the local council. Because you wouldn't expect to get an answer, would you? At least most of us wouldn't. What happens when you do it? Well, when I usually write uh, to the local council, they either ignore it completely or send me back very rude replies. <laughs> what is the subject matter that you indulge in? Well, drains and this kind of thing. Oh, you know. fascinating yes. material, yes. <laughs> Imagine. Tell me, are you good at remaining cool in a crisis? I'm not quite sure. In front of you are three telephones. I'm now going to give you a coordination test. That telephone has a bell, that has a bleep, and that has a buzzer. In a minute, a call's coming through for you. I'd like you to take the message. Uh, do you know the height of the Empire State Building? No. What was the message? Telephone code Oh, the Z. code Z routine. Yes, we know that. We won't take everyone through that. Now, I'm going to show you something else, but I can only show you once, so pay very close attention, will you? There's another call coming for you. I'd like you to take the message. You were halfway there. That relieves the whole line. Do you follow? Indeed. 
Agent Benjamin has scored five points for the first correct move, five points for the second correct move, but he did fall into the trap at the end, so it's a total of ten points. Thank you, Benjamin. Did you get the seat over there? Special Agent number three is Miss Carol Batten from Manchester. She's 26 and she works in her father's furniture shop. She swims, plays chess, likes dancing, and she's a keen astronomer. She's been to Russia once and twice to America, and she says she is still looking for Mr. Wright. Hello, Batten. Glad you could join us from Manchester. Did you go to Russia as yourself or as somebody else? I can't say. Oh, I see. It's like under I can't say. I can't Quite. even say that I went to Russia. Oh, I see. No, it's just happened that we found that out quite. Yes. Very good. Now, I'd like you to single out, for those of us who are not so well informed, the difference between astrology and astronomy. Well, I prefer astronomy, yes. which is the factual side of things, the data. Uh, the superstitious fortune-telling is astrology. <laughs> that should get us a few letters from somewhere. <laughs> Even if it's only from Russia. <laughs> now, as a... Uh, a woman, this is obviously miles away from your natural characteristics, but could you, if you had to be, could you be devious? Yes. Well, I want you to be a little, this isn't exactly devious, but slightly off-center. I'd like you to recite Mary Had a Little Lamb in Broken English. What's Broken English? Well, somebody who perhaps doesn't speak English as their native oh, tongue. Mary had a little lamb. It's, uh... I think in Lancashire, they may feel they speak... <laughs> they may speak... They think they speak pure English, so... Perhaps we could move off the island. Right. Um... Mary had a little lamb. Its feet was like a snow. And everywhere the Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Very good, very good. I could see you moving from the French border right across the Hamburg plain. Uh, now I have a test for you, coordination. Three telephones. That has a bell, that has a bleep, and that has a buzzer. There's a call coming through for you, and I'd like you to accept that call and give me the message. Uh, do you know the difference between linen and cotton? No. Nope. What was the message? Code yes, Z. the code Z routine, yes, we all know that. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you something else, but I can only show you once, so you must pay close attention. <laughs> There's another call coming through for you. I'd like you to take the message. the first correct move, five points for the second correct move, but she did fall into the trap, so that's a total of ten points. Batten, would you like to return to base over there? Special agent number four is Mr. Roger Manning from Kingswingford in the West Midlands. He's a 43-year-old art teacher who's married with two children. His hobbies include drama and collecting toy cars. Hello, Manning. Glad you were with us. What's the best of your car collection, would you say? Well, I'm rather proud of the fact that I can say that I've got about 14 really first-class Rolls Royces in my front room. And uh, size? Unfortunately, they're about that big. <laughs> but beautifully made, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. Uh, we have a coordination test in front of your three telephones. That has a bell, that has a bleep, and that has a buzzer. A call is coming through for you, and I'd like you to take it. Um, what's cumulus? Um, a cloud formation. What's the message? Uh, telephone code Z, Bad sir. Code Z, boys. They've been on at us all day, yes. Now, I'd like you to watch very closely, because I can only show you this once. There's another call coming through for you, and I'd like you to take the message. But in order to 
make that totally possible, you'd have to actually take that one, and that would be right, because that would have relieved it. Correct. Right? Agent Manning had scored five points for the first correct move, no points for the second move, and he did fall into the trap, so that's a total of five points. Yes, you may. Have you tonight's assignment? Certainly, sir. Thank Top you, Manning Parker. Now, one of the essentials in intelligence operations is the ability to communicate in code. Of course, most codes can be broken, even the most sophisticated, but it's a long, painstaking job. Suddenly, the picture has changed. A code breaker has been invented that will decipher a code within 15 seconds of it being transmitted. This device is so small that it fits into an attache case. And at the moment, this code breaker is in the possession of Major Brodnik of the Bosnovian Secret Service. Your ultimate mission will be to locate that code breaker and destroy it. Now, your cover will be as a cultural mission. And we have to get you across the border. But before we do that, we have to put you through another test. Miss Moneypacker, take over, will you? Certainly, am. May I have Agent Cobley? Would you like to come and stand on this spot here? Put your back to the screen. Agent Benjamin, would you like to come and stand on that spot there? Facing the screen. Now, on the screen behind you, we're going to project a famous object of art. You, Agent Benjamin, without saying a word and using actions only, must convey to Agent Cobley exactly what is on the screen. You, Agent Cobley, have 45 seconds to give me the correct answer, but you can ask as many questions as you like. You will gain five points for the correct answer and a possibility of three if the mime is below standard. Off you go. It's a uh, sculpture. Um. Keep asking questions. Uh, Nelson? Um, <laughs> Venus de Mola. Fantastic. <laughs> Would you like to change places? Right, Agent Benjamin, it's your turn. Can we please, cha please change the slide? You have 45 seconds starting from now. It's a picture. The Laughing Cavalier. Sit down. Could I have Agent Batten? Would you like to come and stand with your back to the screen? Agent Manning, would you like to come and stand facing the screen? Now you know the test. Can we please change the slide? And you have 45 seconds starting now. Tall, straight building. Uh, goes narrow, tower. An object, a block. Um, a monolith. Um, oh, it's an Egyptian one. It's an Egyptian tablet. Uh, you haven't found out whether it's a sculpture or... It's a sculpture. It's a painted pyramid. It's, um... It's, just, it's a clear, clear battery needle. Fantastic. Well done, you've got five points. <laughs> Working like crazy there. Can we please change the slide? You have 45 seconds starting now. It's a uh, painting, sculpture, uh, a military figure, um, standing, large hat, um, tricorn hat, a sailor, uh, opponent, yes, Nelson. Correct. Well done, Agent Manning. Could we please go over our computer to have a readout of the total rating so far? Agent Cobley, 10. Agent Benjamin, 15. Agent Batten, 15. Agent Manning, 10. Now, as part of your cultural mission to Bosnovia, you will have to partake in a historical pageant. Now, you've all been given historical characters, and I hope you've all done your homework, because Major Brodnik will test the authenticity of these characters. So to preempt that danger, I'm going to fire questions at each one of you. Now, I want you to give an answer, even if it's a wrong one, so sharpen up your bluff. A correct answer will score five points, 
and a good bluff answer will score points as well. Aidan Copley, would you take the chair? Copley, what character are you representing? Henry VIII. How many times have you been married? Six. Correct. Who was your heir? Edward VI. Correct. You were already related to your first wife before marriage. What was the relationship? My first wife was my brother's wife. Uh, yes, indeed. In fact, sister-in-law. You wrote a book on the sacraments for which you received a title from the Pope which has been borne by all successive sovereigns. What was it? Video Defensor. Which for the English? Is defender of the Faith. Correct, in every sense. In every pack of cards, there are at least four portraits of someone close to you. Who is it? Anne Boleyn. No, it's your mother, Elizabeth of York. Agent Cobley has scored 20 out of a possible 25 points, plus one for bluff, so that's a total of 21. Benjamin Agent Benjamin, what character are you representing? Uh, Napoleon. Where were you born? At Ajaccio on Corsica. Correct. Who was your first wife? Uh, Josephine. Correct. In 1798, you captured Cairo. What was the name of the victory which made this possible? Jasper? No. The Battle of the Pyramids. Three of your brothers became crowned heads. Louis was king of Holland. Jerome was king of Westphalia. What was Joseph? Uh, Joseph, Holland, Westphalia, uh, Naples. That is correct. And a couple of years later, obviously he hadn't enough to do. Did you know, this is only a bonus thing, he also became king of Spain. This is a reproduction of a French soldier's cartridge pouch. What was it that you told your soldiers was in every man's cartridge pouch? A field marshal's baton. Correct. Agent Benjamin has scored 20 points out of a possible 25, plus one for bluff, so that's a total of 21. Batten, would you like to take the chair? Agent Batten, what character are you representing? Mary, Queen of Scots. You're known to history as Mary, Queen of Scots. What's your family name? Stuart. Correct. You married for the first time at the age of 16. Who was your husband? Francis. He became king a year later and died the year after. He was known colloquially... He was a Dauphin. That's exactly right. How many times were you married? Three. Who were they? By the age of 25, uh, Francis, Lord Darnley, and then Bothwell. Correct. How was your second husband murdered? Oh, well, I had a part in it, actually. Um, I persuaded my third husband to blow up the house. He was strangled first. Not a pretty scene, was it? No, rubble all over the place. Yes, I see. <laughs> yes, of course. In this great hall of a castle, you were executed by order of Queen Elizabeth I. What was the name of the castle? Fotheringay. In the county of? Lancashire. No, it doesn't matter because you were right, but it's Northamptonshire. Agent Batten Mark? has scored 25 points out of a possible 25. Manning, would you take the chair, please? Agent Manning, what character are you representing? Uh, Nelson, sir. What was the famous signal which you flew from the victory before Trafalgar? England expects every man will do his duty. Correct. You were born at Burnham Thought in Norfolk in 1758. What did your father do? 1756. My father was a vicar. Yes, you're quite correct. I'll check up on that date. We may go into a lengthy correspondence. In what action was it that you turned your blind eye to a signal of recall from the flagship with the words, I see no signal? The Battle of Copenhagen. Of course. Can you remember where it was that you first met Lady Hamilton? Uh, when I was visiting Naples, her husband was emissary for me. Yes, exactly, quite. These flags represent the word expect. The computer is telling us that one of the agents has failed to reach the required rating. Agent Cobley has failed his mission. Agent Cobley, 
I'm afraid you have been with call from duty to go on a crash course, but if you'd care to join Miss Moneypacker, she has some items that she has taken from our Department of Useful Gadgets, which may help you further along the road. Would you join her? Agent Cobley, we'd like you to accept with our compliments this really beautiful set of 9x60 binoculars with coated lenses. If you haven't taken up bird watching already, here's your chance. Thanks for coming on the show. Right the the show. Three agents are left to complete the mission, but before they can do anything, they must penetrate the disguise of this well-known celebrity. <laughs> Follow their progress. Join us again in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to The Master Spy. The man you are now looking at is a well-known celebrity who also operates as an undercover agent. Would the well-known celebrity, thank you, our three special agents who are still remaining with us have to identify him. The first one to name him will improve his computer rating by 10 points. Would our contact kindly make his report? The Bosnovians have cracked telephone code Z. They also know we plan to infiltrate the historical pageant. Apart from interceptions, cipher signals, their new code breaker can also tap telephone lines. The machine is located in the office of Major Brodnik and must be destroyed at all costs. Thank you, Contact, for that very valuable report. Have any of our special agents managed to identify him, I wonder? Right, starting with you, Benjamin. No, sir. Batten? Manning? Um, no, sir. Right, now to make your job a little easier, I'm going to give you a hint. He comes from the world of spinners, and he is well known occasionally for getting the needle. He comes from the world of spinners, and he does get the needle. Now, you can ask as many questions as you like, and the first one to get him We'll score five points. Off you go. Uh, anything to do with cricket? No, I don't play cricket. A textile series. Uh, play. I don't have anything to do with textile. You play guitar. I'd like to, but I can't. The world of entertainment. I'd like to think so, sir. Is You're that moustache real? I don't think it is. It's a hell, to, I, hell when I take it out. <laughs> You're, you're part of a group. I wish I was, sir, but I am not. A dramatic uh, entertainment. I'm not a dramatic entertainer anymore, sir. But he does get the needle. Yes, I get the needle. Nichols. I think our celebrity contact has beaten our special agent. Would you like to uh, expose yourself? I'd love to, sir. I really always wanted to expose myself. It's one of the things I really enjoy doing is exposing myself in front of really wonderful people. Marvelous. Marvelous. Good to see you, Peter. Very good. Very good. That is very good. You have actually... Well done, Pete. You've got a sheet of plastic on your top lip. I know, we can but... Take that. You want me to remove you? it very quickly? It's one of those quick oh, things. Uh, I don't uh, notice that it's happened. <laughs> have you any more information to help them complete their mission? I have indeed, yes. The, uh, the, uh, you know, the chaps. They're very, very obsessed with... The Bosnovians? That's... I thought oh, you yes, never mentioned No, no. The Bosnovians the are very, very much obsessed with numbers. Yes. And I shot a bit of film the other day, and I think you'll see what I mean. Right. Would you turn your chairs round and face the screen? Now, I want you to watch this very carefully. Right? Roll film. I've been tracking Major Brodnik out of town, and the first thing I noticed was his rather odd number plate. I wondered if it was trying to tell me something. When he just about stopped at a crossroads, the first thing he did was to get out and write down the kilometers from a road sign. All this seemed to add up to something. And whatever it was, the Major had made a note of it. It was at this point that I noticed the front of his motor car 
And then something very disturbing happened. I ran out of film. And by the time I'd reloaded my camera, the Major was entering a nearby telephone box. I watched him dialing a number. As soon as he started to speak, I could see this was no ordinary public call box. Although I couldn't make out which number he dialed, I had a pretty good idea because I heard him say, Hello, is that Berlin? I then heard him mention page 766, and immediately I knew its destination. Whether he'll make it or not in that car, I don't know. Because then came my biggest tragedy. I found I'd run out of petrol. Would you like to turn around? Thank you, Pete, for that very valuable report. Thank you for joining us for the briefing, and thank you for letting us into the secret side of your life. That was a real pleasure, sir. I want to tell you. Thank you very much. Good luck. <laughs> Now I'm going to put you through some questions. Three questions each. You can score five points for the correct answers. See how much of that film you've managed to absorb. Starting with you, Benjamin. How many kilometers did the sign say was to Warsaw? 1,001. No, it was 1,234. What did Major Brodnick bring out of the telephone box that he didn't go in with? A page, 766. Correct. Manning, where do you think was the Major's destination? Um, Warsaw. No, it was Vienna. Benjamin, what was the registration number on the rear of the car? UR1A. URA1. Yes, I think that is the idiom. Uh, what was on the front, Batten? 1MA12. Oh, yes, you've avoided a pitfall, haven't you? Uh, which hand did Brodnick use when he was dialing his number? He used his right hand. I'm afraid he used his only other hand, his left hand. <laughs> Benjamin, what was the total number of kilometers on each arm of the signpost? The total number of kilometers? Seven. Seven kilometers? Sorry, I thought you meant seven numbers. No, 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 uh, the total number of kilometers on each arm. 2,221. You're exactly 221 out. It's 2,000 exactly. <laughs> Batten, what was the camera looking at just before the film ran out and had to be reloaded? Um, Major Brodnick dialing in the telephone box. No, the front number plate. Manning, why was it no ordinary telephone call box? It was painted green. No, in that part of the world they do paint them green. He used no money. Money packer. Can we please now go over to our computer for a readout of the total rating so far? Agent Benjamin, 41. Agent Batten, 50. Agent Manning, 35. Agent Batten is in the lead, but it's still a long road to go, which brings us conveniently to the one thing you'll need when you enter Bosnovia, and that is a road map. But curiously, it's the one thing that can cause your downfall, because over there they fold their maps in a special way. Miss Moneypacker, I'd like you to give them the folding road map test. Certainly, Andy. With this uh, map, we have used the conventional concertina method for putting it together. You'll notice a large O on the front and a large O on the back. But, inside, we have two crosses. Now then, the people in Bosnovia always fold their maps with the crosses on the outside. <laughs> so, I'm going to give you each a map, which has been folded in the conventional concertina method. And when I give you the word, I want you to stand up and refold the map so you end up with a cross on the front and a cross on the back. You will be marked according to your skill and you can gain up to 15 points, starting from now. <laughs> Right. 
right, Agent Benjamin, you have landed up with a cross on the front and no cross on the back. So I can give you 10 points, okay? Right, Agent Batten, oh dear, oh law. You didn't really get it folded. Oh, you didn't put it on your mind, my darling. Well, I'm afraid I can't give you any points at all because it's not folded and there's no crosses on the front and back. Never mind, no points. Agent Manning, you have done a good job on that side and not such a good job on that side, but it is folded neatly, so I'll give you 10 points too. Agent Manning has failed in his mission. Who'd like to join Miss Moneypacker? Agent Manning, we'd like you to accept this really splendid four-band stereo radio. It works on battery and mains, and it also incorporates a cassette recorder. And here is a road atlas, so you'll never have to worry about folding maps anymore. Thank you for coming on the show. Well, there's just two of you left to complete the mission. How are you feeling, Fred Benjamin? Confident, sir. Confident. And what about you? Have you any regrets so far, Carol? Yes. All right, we'll go into that after the next phase, yes? Sir, we have an urgent message from our man in Bosnia. Ah, yes, this is just what we've been expecting. Now, Benjamin, I'd like you to read this. I don't want you to be put off, because our decipher clerk has got no idea about punctuation. Pat, and I'd like you to pay particular attention to every detail of this. Have intercepted message from Major Brodnick to all field operatives in the top drawer of his desk. There is an envelope which is sealed open and you will find information as to the way. The code breaker can be made to self-destruct by dialing a secret number in the event of its falling. Into enemy hands, I must go immediately, so you must act quickly. Right, Barton, is that quite clear to you? Would you like to give us a breakdown of it? Um, there's an envelope in the top drawer of a desk. Yes. Which I think is stuck down open. It probably stuck down. I suspect that inside the envelope there will be the number I have to dial to destruct the device after dropping it. <laughs> I think you've got a lot of the details pretty right. Now, it's a, quite you a... You have to hurry because someone's coming. Exactly that. Now, it's rather a hazardous plan, but it's the only one we have available to us. Miss Moneypacker is going to accompany you on the mission as a decoy. And being my assistant, obviously Major Brodnick will invite her around for caviar and cornflakes to find out what I'm up to. Now, we're going to put my undercover man in there, uh, in that kind, Bosnovia, who is going to sabotage their scrambler system so that you two will be acceptable as telephone engineers. Do you follow that? Now, I'd like you to follow me now and watch very carefully. This is a plan of a junction box for a telephone scrambler system. Each end of these three cables must be plugged into one of these six holes. When the right connection is made, a light will appear over the cable. There are two such junction boxes in Major Brodnick's office, and your problem will be to find which hole lights up the bulb in each case. All we know is that when you've completed one circuit, the rest follow the same pattern. In other words, if the first cable was plugged into the first hole, the second cable would be plugged into the second hole, and so on. Uh, is that quite clear? Now, off you go, and remember the Bosnovian's fascination with figures. You'll probably need these calculators. I think they'll come in very handy. I'd like to shake you both by the hand. Thank you, sir. Because one of you won't be returning. A short holiday, you say, Miss Moneypacker? Oh, yes, strictly pleasure. A pleasure shared, I assure you. It is always a pleasure to have you in our beautiful country. You play a very cute game. But you're not bad at chess either. <laughs> Tell me, how is my old friend M back at British Intelligence? Oh, he's as busy as ever. Actually, I wonder if I could use one of your phones. I have an urgent message to give to him. I only wish you could. We have, as you say, gremlins in the works. In fact, at this moment, I am waiting for the telephone engineers to come and put things right. And, uh, not before time. Why is it always my telephone that are under blink? Such incompetence. Come, stand here. Stand here by me. I will deal with you in a moment when I have finished this game of chess. Now, pay attention. You may learn something. I see, I think, the move which will seal the fate of my beautiful opponent. Oh, I think you've mated me. My favorite move. <laughs> uh, would you like to try again? I'd love another cup of tea first. 
that I will see if I can organize a fresh pot. Thank you. As for you two, if you value your jobs, you will fix my telephones pretty damn quick. Very good, sir. Right, quick. Agent Benjamin, go and close the door. Quick, and come back here. Quick as you can, we haven't got much time. Now then, this is our only chance to find a sealed envelope. Do either of you remember where it's hidden? Top of the desk. Right, sure. stay there, stay there, and I'll go and get it for you. Right, let's have a look. What have we here? Yeah. Sealed and unsealed. It's sealed and unsealed, and I'll unseal it. The envelope. That's right. Now, I think it's a coded message. Get out your electronic calculators and switch them on. Now, it says, add Berlin to Warsaw, then take away Prague. Does it mean anything? Yes. Add Berlin to Warsaw, then take away Prague. Now then look, look, there's a photograph on the other side. There's Berlin, add Berlin to Warsaw and take away Prague. Equals one, two, three, six. Terrific. That's the correct figure. Now then, that figure will self-destruct the code breaker. But first of all, you've got to plug up the telephone junction box. You go over there. Have you got your figure yet? Yes. Right. That's your junction box there. You've got to plug up the junction boxes. Sir, that's yours there. Plug up the junction boxes and make sure that you have, when you get the first light up, the next two follow the same pattern. Off you go, quick as you can. He's only making a cup of tea and it doesn't take long to make a cup of tea. You've got one light up, remember the pattern, and follow it. You've got two lights up. You're working well. You've got three lights up, now quickly, what was the figure? Could you remember it? Right, now dial it on the telephone. Keep plugging up your, keep plugging up your light. Right, quick, get down, there's going to be explosions. <laughs> You've exploded the code instructor. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's quick. We must get back to base. You stay here and you must call the major as long as you can. Congratulations. Quick, out of the French window. She's coming in the door. Off we go. Ah, because there's that door. Gremlins with Union Jacks on them. And I suppose, good agent that you are, you intend to tell me nothing. Not at all. Come over here. Everybody has his price. And as it happens, I have here a few things to loosen your tongue. A camera, 35 millimeter camera with an electronic flash. And also here, a fully automatic slide projector. And perhaps if you were a really good boy and told me everything that you knew, I could also supply a screen. Now let's begin. Congratulations. You have well and truly earned the title of the Master Spy. Miss Money Packer, will you see that she is well rewarded for her devotion to duty? Just so you never lose count of world events, whatever mission you may be on, wherever you are in the world, we'd like to present to you this really magnificent television set, which is the world's smallest television set. There we are. Congratulations. Well done. And with another mission successfully accomplished, we would like to thank our celebrity contact, Pete Murray. The current head of the Bosnovian Secret Service, Garfield Morgan. And our four special agents. We hope you'll join us this time next week for another assignment in The Master Spy. Good night. William Franklin will be appearing in Castle in the Air at the Playhouse Theatre Harlow next week.